Hi, it's the Boffin. Today we're going to have a look at three inexpensive soldering irons. We have the Yiwa 947-2 at just $13, the $43 Quico T12 951, and the very popular TS100. Let's have a closer look at each. At the bottom end, this is what $13 buys you. Everything came in this little box. We have a solder sucker, set of tweezers, some inexpensive solder, some spare tips of various types, chisel, point, and the iron itself. The iron comes with a little stand and a tip cleaner. The stand's a bit lightweight and easy to knock over, but it's $13. The iron has on it a little temperature control. We've got it set for about 350, right around there. Plug straight into the 110. The cord on it is a bit heavy and a bit inflexible, which means you're always fighting the cord. Also, I wonder about the heat resistance of this. Might try that against with another iron and see what happens. I don't really want to touch it when it's plugged in. However, let's uh, see how it works. For the first test, we're going to tin up the end of the bit and we'll just see how accurate the temperature setting is. I have it set to pretty much exactly 350. We touch it on the end of this thermocouple. Hard to hold it right there. And we're getting about 315, maybe a little bit more. Seems to be jumping around a little bit. That's probably good enough for home electronics work. Here we are, we're up to 330. Within about 20 degrees, that should do. This isn't a high-end $200 station. This is a $13 iron, and let's try and remember what that buys us. For the next test, let's zoom in close and do some soldering. I have here just a little piece of protoboard, dot board, and we'll just try and solder up some joints. Seems to take this solder beautifully. This is not the solder that came with it. This is just off-the-shelf MG Chemicals tin lead 3763. It's certainly worthwhile spending the extra money to get good quality solder. Now let's try seeing how it survives against a large amount of copper. I have over here a sample piece of board with some blobs of solder on it and let's see if it can melt what we have It's certainly struggling trying to heat up this existing blob of solder. It just doesn't have the thermal capacity to, to do that. You'd have to hold this on here a long, long time. Try and make a new blob and it's, it's struggling. But again, it was $13. Can't really fault it too much. And for doing small circuit boards, this would be just fine. Let's have a look at the next contender. This is the Quico T12 951 control unit that takes 110 and converts it down into about 24 volts. A nice flexible silicone lead. Again, the grip is a nice rubberized, feels pretty good in the hand. And it came with a couple of extra tips. With these style of tips, the heater is actually right in the end of the tip. So the tips are a little bit more expensive to buy, but supposedly provide more accurate temperature regulation. Let's have a look and see how it works. When you turn the unit on, you can see it shows you the temperature that it's currently at. Comes up pretty quickly to, uh, well, let's see what it's set to, probably around about 350. Relatively easy to change the temperature. There we are, we've dialed it up to 350. And the iron itself, seems to jump around a lot, but we'll see how that works. Here I've got it placed on just a little separate stand that I had because it didn't come with one, but let's try the same tests we did with the previous iron. First we have the thermocouple test. Now remember this is set for 350. We'll tin the end of this iron. We'll hold that onto the end of the thermocouple. And it's pretty accurate. That's showing us 360 on the button. 
363. I'd call that a success. Let's try soldering with this. Again, we have our little piece of blob board. We can get in. This accepts the solder very, very cleanly. It's very comfortable in the hand. I don't know about the quality of the tips, but the advantage of this is that supposedly it is a standard Hakko off-the-shelf tip. So if the Chinese tips were bad, you could replace it with the genuine Hakko Japanese tips. This cord is very flexible, easy, doesn't add much weight to the iron. Let's try it on a big piece of copper. On one of these existing joints, it struggles a little bit. It doesn't have huge amount of thermal capacity. It's probably better than the Yiwa was. Let's try it on this slightly smaller one. It gets there eventually. Again, we're not comparing this to the two and three hundred dollar Weller and Hako stations. This is our inexpensive attempt. However, I'd call that quite successful. It's a good little soldering iron, and this would be a good addition to any bench. Let's have a look at this TS100 iron. Firstly, I'm powering it off a laptop adapter, and this is probably not the optimal way to do it. The laptop adapter cable is not that flexible, and it's PVC, so it has no heat resistance. However, standard 2.5 millimeter jack at 19 volts, plug it in, tells us to turn it on, shows us the temperature as it heats up. It's heating up very, very quickly. Whether that's true or not, I don't know. And we've got it set to 350 degrees like all the others. We tin the end, and it does have lots of heat in the end. We'll hold that up against our thermocouple and see how we do for temperature accuracy. And it shows us about 335. That's pretty good. 340. Let's try actually soldering with this. For small joints, it accepts the solder just fine. It's very lightweight, easy to hold, relatively easy to hold. It doesn't have either a guard or a rubber grip, but the aluminum body seems to stay relatively cool. Let's try it with that big ground plane. We'll try and heat up one of these existing pads. And this is where it kind of falls apart. It simply doesn't have the thermal capacity to heat up this large expanse of copper. This would be a problem if you were trying to desolder a big transistor that hooked to the ground plane. However, for regular connections, this is pretty good, but it really struggles with this. It does have some nice features like auto off and auto sleep. However, I think most of the time you would probably know this was plugged in. Doesn't come with any other additional accessories in the box. It was just the tip and the iron itself and the little Allen key to affix the tips. So it sits okay on the bench, but again, the cord is heavier than the iron itself. So you probably want to find some little stand or something for it. Let's sum up for these three irons. For the Yiwan 947, what do I like about it? Well, the price is the best thing to like about this. At $13, it's a steal. It's relatively comfortable in the hand. Downside to it, the cord isn't that flexible. The stand that comes with it is a bit floppy. However, it's the only one that even came with a stand. Really, really good value if you were just getting started. Second, the Quico T12 951. I like a lot of things about this. It doesn't quite have the capacity of a Weller or a Hakko, but it's very comfortable in the hand. It has a nice flexible silicone cord has a base unit that you can stick away on your bench and see what's going on. I think that this probably is the best of the bunch with respect to being a general purpose iron. And the only question of quality here is the tips. And because it's a standard T12 tip, you could replace it with a Hakko T12 tip. Lastly, we have the TS100. This is a very specialty item. I wouldn't want to use this on my bench day to day. However, if I was in the field and I had to be up a ladder, powering this from a little 18 volt pack would probably be very, very convenient. It's the most expensive of the bunch and I think a bit of a specialty tool. 
I wouldn't recommend this for someone who was just getting started. Unless you worked in the field a lot, you were fixing your drone when it broke or things like that. Again, this is a bit of a specialty item. Well, thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, remember to give it a thumbs up or subscribe to my channel where there'll be more of these in the future.